Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Dororo, a Japanese fantasy drama action comedy from 2007 that stars Satoshi Sumabuki and Koshi Bizaki. Now this movie is based on a 1960s manga series by Osamu Tezuka, who also contributed the manga that was recently adapted into the film Tezuka's Barbara which I reviewed previously on this channel. Very interesting film. Dororo is one of those planned movie trilogies that ended after the first film. Never got the sequels that it was setting up. Now, this is usually due to less than stellar box office performance, but I've never been able to confirm the specific reason for why this movie never got the two sequels that were planned. I think this movie actually did fairly well at the Japanese box office, so I'm really uncertain as to why they didn't make them. But, if any of you know, feel free to comment below and let me know. But, uh, in any case, let's go through the Wikipedia plot synopsis. So, Dororo is a young woman assuming the identity of a man, despite others seeing through her brash and violent exterior. So this girl's father was killed by a man named Daigo, when he attempted to call the warlord out. So the girl and her mother escaped into the wilderness, and at her mother's dying request, in order to carry out her father's insurmountable vendetta against Daigo, the child takes on a man's identity and grows up without a permanent home and becomes a thief. Meanwhile, our male lead here is a man by the name of Hiyakimaru, whose body was sold to demons by his birth father resulting in his lacking of 48 body parts. And you're probably wondering, well, how does this guy function without 48 body parts? Well, he survives because he is discovered by a master spellcaster who basically takes pity on him and replaces his missing body parts using deceased children, using alchemy. So yeah, uh, and this guy begins a quest to destroy the demons and regain the body stolen from him at birth. And these two characters meet and kind of go on this journey together. Now, it's been a long time since I've watched this movie, uh, but I did enjoy it as much as I did the first time I saw it back in the day. This is basically a fantasy film that supplements the action with some decent dramatic elements and some good humor. Now, very early on, we see the reason why Hiyakimaru's father made a deal with the demons in a flashback, kind of, or a, a setup scene. And that's what sets up the core conflict. There's like a family dynamic in this film and a dilemma that serves as like the foundation for the story. Because our male lead, uh, you know, he wants to regain his body parts by killing these demons that stole them from him. Uh, but he also wants to resolve his family conflicts at the same time. And the demons, on the other hand, they're attempting to, like, defend themselves and attack this dude by force and also manipulate some of the characters to kind of facilitate that human conflict. So it's, there's a lot of stuff going on in this. Most of these elements are developed enough to complement the action, but there is kind of a, a lack of depth in this film that kind of prevents it from being, like, really impactful. And one reason for this, in my opinion, is the ending. You know, it's, it's just, when you watch the ending of this movie, it's moving along well, and then the ending's just like, it's lacking like a proper crescendo, something that really enhances the drama or really sets up that second film they were going for, but it doesn't really do that. You know, the ending is, it's pretty good, but it's one of the, like the least memorable scenes of the whole movie, and you don't want to, you don't like that. <laughs> you know, you want a movie to finish strong. I don't think this movie really finished strong. That's a little bit of a problem. But as I said previously, I do enjoy the film. The mood is a mix of like old school samurai flick, old school American fantasy blended together with something like the Great Yokai War with a few like really quirky, odd monster demon dudes that show up. And if that sounds good to you, watch the movie. <laughs> There's like a delightful oddness about this one that, uh, that makes it quite amusing. I mean, the opening scene has a talking rat. You know, just to give you an idea, uh, there's like this cave scene that like doubles as a dance club bar with like tribal dancers dancing. Uh, the body reconstruction scene where the, you know, our main character is a kid and his body's reconstructed using like these dead bodies. It's a pretty cool scene. 
And, there's, uh, and then you'll have, like, random goofy monsters show up that this dude has to kill. But it's pretty neat stuff here. And the film takes itself seriously enough. So it kind of helps to balance out some of the more outlandish stuff that shows up. So I really kind of like the tone in this, actually. It's a little bit different from your typical, like, fantasy flick. CGI is used rather heavily in this, uh, for some of the fights especially. But, uh, like, the different creative demons that show up kind of help to balance it out. There is some practical effects mixed in. And I will say, I don't know, the CGI in this movie did not bother me as much as, as it usually would. Maybe that's because it's a fantasy film, and I could kind of uh, suspend my disbelief easier for a fantasy movie, because it does get a little cartoonish in spots, but I, I found it to be kind of good fun in its uh, execution for some reason. So, uh, and some of the effects are pretty good. So, Dororo is not, it's not like an action-packed movie, but it has some good stuff in it. So, my favorite scene of the film is, like, right in the middle. And it's, like, this montage of, like, demon fights with our main protagonist. <laughs> and it's, like, multiple demons are showcased. And that's, like, the most fun scene of the movie. I really enjoyed it. Now, in terms of the casting, I mean, over the years, I've become a pretty huge fan of Satoshi Sumabuki. Good in the lead role here. Carries the film nicely. Koshi Bizaki, I feel like a lot of her earlier roles were pretty serious. Uh, this, at least that I remember or that I saw leading up to this. And she just cuts loose in this movie. Like, uh, very sassy, very spunky. And I, I really liked seeing her in a role like this. It may have been the first time I saw her in a role quite like this. Uh, a lot of people know her from Battle Royal. She was like the evil chick in Battle Royal, right? She was like ruthless. But uh, in this one, she's like, she's kind of charming in kind of a, a, a sassy way. So I really liked her in this. The soundtrack in this movie is surprising. You know, it has like a tribal feel to it most of the time. Some instrumentation seems culturally specific to Japan. But then in some scenes you have like this almost like Spanish vibe that kicks in. And I was like, what is this? And it was like, it was pretty fun how they like mixed up the, sound, uh, the soundtrack in this. I liked it. They switched it up. Now, this does have a pretty long runtime. It's like 2 hours and 18 minutes, which, you know, isn't that long for a fantasy movie, ironically. But, uh, you know, I'd say the ending, if the ending was stronger, wouldn't be as much of a problem. The ending's just kind of, like I said, drags a little bit. They go for a little bit more of a dramatic route instead of like a good, good climax. But, uh, yeah, this movie has enough oddities and entertaining aspects to keep it going. So, if you're in the mood for like a Japanese fantasy film... A little splash of quirkiness. Check out Dororo. It's a, a shame the sequels were not made, because I, I definitely would have watched them. Uh, but, uh, yeah, this is most readily available on DVD, unfortunately. So, But, hey, if you could find it streaming somewhere, check it out. And as always, I will see you next time.